Hi everybody, Kat here. Welcome to my channel. First thing I want to say today is uh, we all want to wish Sarah Ferguson, Duchess of York, a speedy recovery as we just found out in the last 24 hours that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. She's just gotten out of the hospital, I believe, yesterday. She was in there six days uh, recovering from a mastectomy and now she's home and from all we know the surgery was successful so we want to wish her well and now we'll get into the topic of today's uh, today's video in response to one of my recent videos a, uh, a listener mentioned that she would like to know what's in the letters between uh, Philip and Diana during the course of her uh, tenure with the royal family. And wouldn't we all want to know what's in those letters? Now, from what I um, have learned listening to videos and different royal reporters and things, that in the beginning, Philip was quite sympathetic to Diana and so I think the letters, you know, were kind of paternal in nature, sympathetic to uh, her situation. I don't know about the later years when she started bucking the system, and I think, I think it upset him. We do know that it was upsetting to the Queen, so uh, we don't know about that. And one of the reasons we may not know about that is uh, the control, the control the palace has over these papers and the royal archives and what's seen and what's not. And even with the freedom of information request, um, I've spoken about recently and the author who was doing the uh, biography of the Queen Mother saying how it was really difficult to uh, to find some some of the documents in the archives he was looking for, some of which he had seen in the past, and did a request to look at them again. And even though they were available at one time, now they're, they've been removed or lost, you know? Um, the royal family only lets out a little bit of what they want you to know. There are probably things in that archives that would just curl our hair, but we have no way of knowing. And this is one thing, at least for me, that makes it very interesting looking at the royal family kind of in a different point of view, because as much as we think we know about them and their purpose and, and all that, I'm sure there's a whole lot of secrets there that we don't know. In fact, we do know that uh, when the Queen Mother died, Margaret burnt a lot of her papers, burnt a lot of her correspondence. So we'll never see that. And this is not an uncommon practice amongst the royals and indeed amongst the aristocratic uh, <clears throat> society as a whole. And I mean, this practice of burning, burning letters and correspondence goes back to Queen Victoria. Now, Queen Victoria, we do have a lot of her correspondence. We do have a lot of her diaries and a lot of her letters. But there's a lot we don't have. Uh, in fact, after her death, one of her daughters took it upon herself to go through all the letters and everything, and she burnt a lot of them. So, you know, there you go. Secrets we will never know. Secrets we will never know because it's been gotten rid of. And it's kind of prescient now because just the other day I saw in the Daily Mail that one of the equerries named Tall Paul uh, has gotten a promotion. The king has made him the keeper of the queen's secrets. How's that for a title? He will have the task 
of sorting through and archiving the late Queen's private diaries and letters. Um, how much of that will ever be made available to the public? We know it will go into the archives. Some of the things in the archives, they can be released in 50 years or 75 years or never at all. Or, you know, just make it very hard, very, very difficult to get access to, to those documents. Um, with the Queen, same thing. What will we ever know? The only case in recent history where we've had, we've had, um, letters and diaries being just wide open was in the case of Charles, when he was Prince Charles and Jonathan Dimbleby wrote that book. Uh, on him, wrote his biography, and then they subsequently followed it up with a <clears throat> televised interview. At the time, Charles opened up his diaries and all his letters, all his correspondence to Jonathan Dimbleby, and uh, this was looked upon as a mistake by another of Charles's biographers, Penny Jr., who is a great supporter of, of Charles, always has been, and even back then, and she claimed that uh, his diaries and papers should never have been open up to this kind of scrutiny until after his death. So even the report, they, they don't agree with this practice and, and are, I guess, you know, quite okay with some things being secret. Now, I've talked before many times about how between the royal family, the British government, the security services, and the press in Britain, how they've managed to suppress, erase, absolutely hide some things that they don't want the public to see, they don't want them to read, they don't want them to know it. In a lot of cases, in a lot of what I've talked about, and then I've gotten some criticism for it because people say, oh my God, she's a crazy woman. A lot of the things that I talk about, we've had access to over here in North America. I mean, Canada, by the way. Um, a lot of books have been published in North America that have been um, absolutely uh, not allowed to be published in Britain. <clears throat> a lot of documentaries, a lot of TV shows, a lot of investigators and reporters. A lot has been talked about across the pond that the Brits never get a chance to hear about, never get a chance to read about. And that's been going on oh, for a hundred years at least. I mean, even going back to the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, the abdication crisis, the story behind that, the British public didn't know till about 10 days before the abdication actually happened, when around the world, everybody had known about Wallace Simpson for five, six years. It wasn't a secret to the rest of us, but uh, so here we go. Here we go. Even Diana herself once said uh, there was an interview and I can't remember which documentary, but it was something I found on YouTube and Ingrid Seward was speaking and she is now the, I think, main editor of Majesty magazine, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, at the time, she was saying in a conversation with Diana, um, they were talking about the early years of Diana and Charles's marriage, and Diana had said, gee, you know, I wish people would know, I wish people really knew that at one time, in the beginning, at one time, there was real affection and love there between Charles and I. And she goes, there are letters and they're in the archives and maybe someday they can be released so people will understand that 
that there was a degree of affection between her and Charles, and that was something that bothered her, you know? So there's all kinds of secrets kept. One thing a lot of, if you follow up on books that are written, interviews are done by investigations, one thing that a lot of them will say um, is that they have turned to archives in the United States and other countries, Canada and other countries, for example, to look for this kind of information because of a lot of what is hidden in Britain has been shared through the security networks that, you know, other countries have, have files on these people. Other countries have, have archived information of, of events. And, and this is what they have to do in a lot of cases because they cannot get it from the British government. They cannot get it from the Royal like archives. Things are, you know, nailed down pretty tight. And this is one thing that I've always said about the Royal family. They, like any other control system, secret society, whatever you want to call it, big corporation, which they indeed are as well, um, they keep their secrets. They only tell you what they want you to know. We know that indeed they do control information that gets out. They do spin information. They, uh, they absolutely hide information that they don't want you to know. They cover up information. Um, and this is one thing, just that one little piece explains how we come to the conclusions that we do sometimes, that there is something hidden, there is something there. And this is how the birth of so-called conspiracy theories happen because when an organization is in the habit of hiding things and spinning things and and uh, only letting out what they want you to know. People catch on and people know there's something more to the story, so it urges them to investigate. And that's what we're trying to do here. There's a whole lot we don't know. There's a lot we've heard about. There's a lot of speculation out there. Some of it you may never have heard before. And that's the whole focus of my channel. This is what I'm trying to do and bring light to this kind of thing. So you may hear things that sound absolutely outrageous. I'm not making them up in my head. I'm, I'm just following up and giving you information that's out there already that you may not have already heard and to give you a chance to look at the information, think about it and make your own decision, research it if you will. Well, I hope that uh, y'all enjoy what's to come. I want to thank everybody that's been leaving comments. I want to welcome all my new subscribers and uh, let's have some fun with this and look at all kinds of things. There's so much we don't know. We're going to try to get to the bottom of it. Have a great day, everybody. Like, subscribe, share this video, and we'll see you in the next one.